my God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. The heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. And we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, they're rising and falling at your will. And we are responding to your love, my God. How
Come on, stir yourself up in the spirit this morning. Something is shifting. God, we declare that you are the chain breaker, God. That you break any shackles, God. You break anything that is keeping us from moving forward this morning, God. We thank you for being our deliverer, God. David said that God delivered me from my enemy who was too strong for me. So God, we say this morning that you would deliver us from our enemy who is too strong from us, God. It seems that we don't have a way out, oh God. But Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the light, oh God. And so we see the light at the end of a tunnel, God. We say that you will break us free, oh God. We say that you will break us free, oh God. We say that you will break us free, oh God. That we will move forward, oh God. And so in the name of Jesus, we come again. Break! 
if you believe that chains are being broken, just open up your mouth and give thanks to our God today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. He's here. His presence is here. His anointing is here. Hey, can't type this one of us. Listen, I believe that our worship is never complete without a sacrifice. I'm going to ask you in just a moment, just have your seat in just a moment, prepare your gifts, your giving, your tithes, your offering, and we're going to bring it to our God today. We're going to bring it to our God, believing that everything that we bring to Him, He blesses it, He multiplies it, and He brings it back to us in money or what money cannot buy. Somebody say amen. amen. And our giving is part of our worship. It's not an interruption of our worship. It's part of our worship. In the Old Testament, it wasn't even legal to come into His presence empty-handed. You, you had to bring something. And if you, you couldn't afford something, you had to bring some praise. Come on, somebody. You had to bring some praise. Put some praise in your mouth. Lift up your hands and bring your heart to Him. You had, you had to bring something to the house of the Lord. And some of you will give by... The giving app some of you text to give you can text the number on the screen here uh, some of you use cash and checks whatever method you give make sure that your heart is in it somebody say my heart is in it and we believe that God is going to bless your gifts because it represents your talent it represents your time it represents time away from your family and as you're giving we pray that God will redeem the time for you in the name of Jesus. Father, bless every gift and bless every giver. Bless every gift and bless every giver. The Bible says you give seed to the sower. We pray in the name of Jesus that the seed will be returned to the house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ushers, go ahead and help us with our giving today. Amen. to be able to come to you guys today because you probably heard us say that on Sundays more families, more lives, more people are changed than at any other time in America. And there's a ladies conference. The Inspired Conference is coming very soon. In just a few short weeks, ladies. I can't believe it's going to be here before we even realize it. And I hope that those of you who are still trying to figure out if you're going to just ignore that noise in the background. It's an airplane. I hope that those of you who haven't registered yet and you're still wondering if you're, if you're going to try to fit it into your schedule, just go ahead and do it. Just jump in, get yourself registered, get those tickets bought so we can all be there together because I know some good things are going to happen, all right? It's always really awesome and we just wanted to take a moment because as you can see, we've been taking just a little bit of time off and we're enjoying it, but we have such a great working, worshiping and witnessing church. So we're always witnessing, always worshiping, if you lean into it, and then we're always working. I want to especially thank all of our team for making great things happen at all of our five locations, and so glad to be coming to you today. So get ready because the series is continuing. Jesus, Jesus. is.
going to be a great day in the house of the Lord today. While some of us are still giving at the giving stations there, let's just prepare our heart for the word of God here. Hallelujah. Help us out. Don't give and stand on your feet. Let's welcome all of our campuses. Come on, let's welcome the Lima campus. Let's welcome the Wayne campus. Come on, somebody make some noise for the Eastwood campus. For the downtown campus. Our online campus. And let's hear it for the Mommy campus right here, right now. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let our King, let our King be lifted up. Let our King, let our King be lifted up. Let our King. was here in the room, how would you react? If the King of Kings, if you could see him. Woo! The Bible said where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. So we believe that he is here in this place today. It is such an honor to be standing here in front of you. The presence of the Lord is, is here. I want to thank God for the amazing worship team here. Do a fantastic job. We want to thank God for all of the leaders at all the campuses. And I want to say a special thanks to Pastor Janet Wendt down there in the Lima campus. I want to thank God for Scott Eastep downtown. Blake Elder is uh, leading the Eastwood campus. I want to thank God for Phil and Meredith Ryburn for carrying the, the burden here. And I want to thank God for Bishop Michael Pitts who is leading, organizing, coordinating, covering us. It's, it's, it's such a privilege to be here and I got to keep moving because it's intimidating to stand here. Not only do you have a couple of thousand people in, in attendance, but you also have 
millions of people that will be watching all around the world. And so pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21 today. We're going to read some scriptures and then we'll go into it. If you could remain standing for the reading of the word, I'll appreciate it. If you are able to, please remain standing. And I'm going to read this and then we'll, we'll preach. Matthew 21, I always read from the English Standard Version. It may sound a little bit different than the version that you have, but I promise in the end we'll get to the same place. Matthew 21, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the fall of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. He overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they say to him, Do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise. And leaving them, he went out to the city, out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. Father, bless this word today. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Before I begin my message, I want to tell you what I've told the ladies at Wayne Campus. I'm a little bit competitive. And so I saw uh, that Pastor Jeff Randon and his, his wife are bringing about 20 ladies from Texas. So I told the ladies of the church, I don't care what your motivation for going to <laughs> ladies' conference is, but I will not allow a church from Texas to have more people at the ladies' conference than, than our campus. I just made that clear. So whatever you have to do, if you have to call off work, if you have to... You, whatever you got to do. You, you got you to take a... I don't know. Whatever you got to do, whatever your excuse is, clear your schedule and register. And I know they're, I know they're watching. I want to talk to all, everybody. I, I, I'm not going to let people coming out here... It's just like when Jesus was alive people that were living in the same city didn't really move when he was in town. It was other people that would come in, uh-uh. We are not going to be outnumbered in our own house. And this, this is nothing spiritual. This is, the Lord didn't tell me to say it. It's just me and my competitive nature. And, and I hope everybody is watching. Come on, Lima. Nope, they're not going to bring 20 ladies from Texas and outnumber us. Eastwood, they're not going to bring 20 ladies from Texas, and uh, bring your neighbors. <laughs> bring, I, don't, I don't care who you bring. If it's a lady, bring her. Pay for the registration, just bring, bring her in the house. We're gonna do what we gotta do. But we're gonna pack this place out. And somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So now let me begin my message. <laughs> let me begin my message. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that for everything there is a season and for everything there is a time under, under, the, under the sun. If you are on this side of heaven, everything has a time, everything has a season. 
And sometimes some seasons seem to be prolonged beyond our ability to handle them. And we deal with what are called cycles in our lives, where you believe, you think for a moment that you've broken through a particular threshold, but you find yourself back at it again. Because I've noticed even in my own life that when the enemy cannot totally stop me or stop my momentum, he tries to redirect me to waste my energy so that I end up at the same place over and over again. Over and over again. But the activities of the enemy are in direct contradiction and opposition to the Word of God, which says, under the sun, everything has a season and everything has a time. It is possible to go through difficult times in your life. It is not normal for difficult time to be the norm in your life. I understand that people have to go on to be to heaven because we're not meant to stay in this earthly body forever. But when it's one after the next, after the other, after the other, and you barely have time to recuperate from the previous loss, and then you are facing with another one, there's a cycle that's going on. And the only way to interject, to stop, to interrupt an ungodly cycle or an ungodly pattern is an encounter with the presence of God. When the eternal God enters into a temporary pattern. He lines that pattern with his will. He aligns your life with his purpose. And the things that seem like they were spiraling out of control all of a sudden are lined up with God's plan and purpose for your life. Listen, if the enemy has been playing in your life and causing you to suffer one loss after another, causing you to be in pain as in a cycle, I have news for you today. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is able to superimpose his will and his plan and his purpose above every purpose of hell. I came to decree and declare to you today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I just want to say it one more time. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Let me just say it one more time, but I'm not talking to you this time. I'm talking to the principality and the powers and the spirits that think they can rule and reign over your life. I'm going to speak directly to them and say, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And there comes a time in your life when Jesus decides out of his sovereign will, to step into the arena of your faith. To disturb everything that's been disturbing you. To break every chain that's been holding you. Hallelujah. To remove every limitation that's been holding you back. There comes a time when Jesus Christ of Nazareth decides enough is enough. I've seen you carry some burdens. I've seen you do some things you were not meant to do. And I'm stepping into your life today. And I'm going to break the chains, break the shackles, deliver you from everything that's been oppressing you. I don't know who I'm speaking with today. But if you will respond with faith, if you will open up your mouth and throw a hallelujah, if you can throw a man in the air, if you can lift up your hands and activate your faith, I believe something can happen in this place today. Come on, Lima, I don't hear you. Somebody in Lima say amen. Come on, Wayne Campers, get up on your feet and give God some praise. Eastwood, what are you doing? It is time to lift up the name of the Lord. Come on, downtown campus. Somebody say Hosanna to the highest. My king has come to visit me. My king has come. My king has come. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 21 that Jesus was drawing near to Jerusalem. And he told the disciples, go into the city. When you go to the city, you are going to find a donkey that is tied. And a colt with her. And tie them and bring them to me. If anybody dares to ask you, what are you doing? Tell them the Lord 
has need. The Lord has need of, of them. You got to start looking at those principalities and power and tell them the Lord has need of me. I can't be dealing with the same stuff I've been dealing with since I was born. The Lord has need of me. I'm not going to allow the enemy to use my mind as a playground because the Lord has need of me. I'm not allowing any family members to go before the time with premature death because the Lord has need of them. Because when you start believing in your heart that God has a plan for your life, the enemy always starts to question you and try to hold you. That's when you have to open up your mouth and say, Devil! The Lord has need of me. There's some things that need to be done. Some things that need to be accomplished. Hallelujah. Some territory that will need to be taken. Some breakthroughs that need to arrive. Some songs that need to be written. Some books that need to be written. Hey, hey, hey. Reba kasa tabroko sotorabas. In the name of Jesus, some medications that need to be invented. Some kids that need to be raised. Some sick people that need to be healed. Some people that are oppressed that need to be delivered and I cannot be bound for the rest of my life when the Lord has need of me. The Lord has need, for, he has need of me. If you're new here and you're wondering, is he ever going to slow down? I got one speed. That's what I got. So fasten your seat belt. This is not a library. Hallelujah. I brought a West African anointing with me. Hey, Kasete Bre Kosurarabas. We preach until the glory falls. We preach until chains are broken. We preach until the anointing fills the room. We preach until we confiscate every spirit, every devil. We preach until the name of Jesus is lifted up. Every people group is sent to the earth for a purpose. But I believe West Africans were sent for spiritual warfare and for establishing the power and the presence of God. We speak until demonic concentrations of our organizations are removed. We speak until angelic reinforcement is sent. We speak until your life is synchronized and syncopated with the move of God in the heavens. We speak until you know that God is real. And we are loud, we are demonstrative, and there is a power that comes out when we speak. That's the only way we know to do it, and that's how I'm going to do it. The Lord has need of me. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has need of me. <laughs> the one you call Jesus, the Hebrews call him Yeshua. Yeshua Mashi, the anointed one and his anointing. And reading this scripture here takes me back to Joshua. Joshua is a transliteration of Yeshua. Joshua in the book of Joshua. When Joshua sends two spies into the city of Jericho, Jesus is sending two disciples to go and tie that donkey. But Joshua sent two spies to spy the town. But when you study out how they were victorious over Jericho, there was no military strategy that was needed. God instructed Joshua to send the two spies so they could find Rahab. Because Rahab was tied. Because Rahab was being abused. Because God needed Rahab. And so he sent the two spies there. Sometimes God is going to use any excuse to send spies into a place to rescue somebody that he has need of. You may be working somewhere at the water company, but God has sent you there as a spy because somebody needs rescuing. You may be working at the school somewhere. There is a co-worker or a student that needs to be rescued. 
You thought the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God gave you was just for you to enjoy. But he gave you those gifts, those talents, those abilities so that you can permeate and penetrate those arenas so that somebody could be rescued. And the way God does it, he sends you into that place and you don't even know who you are looking for until the spies are running for their lives and Rahab opens up her doors. And they come into Rahab's house and she keeps them and she protects them. And they promise her, when we come back, we are coming back for your deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 I'm praying two prayers for you today. May God send people to deliver you from the place where you are at in the name of Jesus. And when you are delivered, may he send you to be a deliverer. It's, 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 it's not over. It's not over. It's not over until the one that used to be abused, come on, the one that used to be under, the, the one that used to be below, it's not over until everything changes. And now I'm the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. It is not over. It is not over. Devil, you thought you had me. Hallelujah. But just like Moses, I may be walking through the wilderness because I have millions more people that I'm going to lead out in this wilderness. And if I don't spend 40 years walking in the wilderness, if I don't spend time in Pharaoh's palace, if I don't spend time out here, I will not know how to take them from one place to the next. But I thank you, God, because you've trained me, you've equipped me through the hard time, through the pain, through the times when I couldn't see the end from the you have equipped me so that when you deliver me I'm taking every everybody with me everybody is coming out with me everybody is coming out my sister is coming out my brother is coming out my mom and dad are coming out my friends are coming out everybody that was in this place with me we are all coming out together Come on, glory a Dios. Glory a Dios. Glory a Dios. Hey, Carabas. Because sometimes, sit down for a minute, sometimes you are oppressed. But the oppression is not because of something that you've done. Sometimes you stay in the place of lack. Not through any mistakes of your own. But God takes you through places. Because he's preparing you to lead others through it. And if you've never been through it, how will you be able to lead them out? And some of you, just like Joseph, you have to be able to turn around to your brothers <laughs> and to all the principalities and powers and tell them, you meant it to kill me. You thought I would give up. You thought I would have lost my mind by now. You thought the story would end. But what you meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. This is a good place to open up your mouth and give God a shout. Come on, somebody, put them hands together. Stir this atmosphere. Because I should have lost my mind. I should have been dead by now. I should have quit by now. I should have given up by now. The stuff that I've been through, I can't even tell you half of it because you would not believe me. But I'm still here. I'm still standing because I understand that to everything there is a time and to everything there is a season. And in order for me to step out of the cycles that I'm in, I need an encounter with God. When the God who is the same, when Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday, today, and forever encounters a temporary situation, that temporary situation has to give way to the King of Kings. 
Come on, I prophesy over you. The things that you are facing today, the obstacles that you are looking at, the enemies that are standing against you, I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus as the Lord is invading your mind, as the Lord is invading your heart, as the presence of God is falling over you right now in the name of Jesus. Those things that you are facing, you will not see them in the next season in the name of Jesus. You will not see them in the next season. We command angelic reinforcement to come and displace every demonic concentration. We pray in the name of Jesus that divine enlightenment will come from the heavens to give you the strategies and the plans to navigate through every situation that you are in. We pray that God gives you the insight to go behind the scenes to deal with every strong man that is... That is trying to control your destiny behind the scenes. It was never your boss. It was never your neighbor. It was never that person that took you to court. There is a spirit behind the scenes. And we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that God is giving you insight. He's opening up the eyes of your understanding that you may see behind the personality and arrest every principalities and power. Because the master has need of me. The Lord has need of me. Jesus Christ has need of me. Hallelujah. 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 Until you receive him as your king, as your Lord, you don't have any legal ground to displace anything that is trying to keep you bound. While Jesus was sitting on that donkey, there was no room for anybody else to sit on him. I speak to you in the name of Jesus as you receive the Lord Jesus in your life as your Lord, as your authority every illegal spirit that has tried to oppress you that has tried to oppress your family has to be displaced in the name of Jesus it's got to be displaced it's got to be displaced it's got to be displaced this is the day of my encounter with God it's got to be displaced it's got to be displaced got to be displaced and so Jesus 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 brings that donkey to him and he takes the donkey and he sits on it and he's walking through Jerusalem as he's walking through Jerusalem people start praising Jesus Hosanna 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 Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Jesus could have walked into the city, but he refused to do so because the Bible said he had to fulfill what was written in the Word. The Word said he had to be on a donkey. When he took that donkey, he also took the child of the donkey with him. When he comes for your deliverance, he's not just coming to deliver you. He is delivering people in your family lineage. Come on, somebody. The Bible say, Joshua spoke to the spies, says, go in the house of the prostitute and bring out the woman that went in. She was one way. When they came out, she was different. And they took her and put her in the genealogy of Jesus. When you look at the genealogy of Jesus, You find Rahab there. But the devil tried to make her believe that she had no plans or purpose for her life. And she was allowing the enemy to borrow her womb. But her womb was supposed to be the vessel through which the son of David would come. And so God had to spend, send spies to bring her out. When she came out, it didn't look like much. Because all she did was give birth to a child. But you look from one generation to the next and what looked like something insignificant, something common has turned into the son of David is now in the house. This is the reason why I believe that revival is already here. Because it doesn't look like what you think it should look like. Rahab had no idea that when she saved the spies and entered into the lineage of Jesus, she had no idea what would come out of that lineage. 
revival is already here. When you teach your kids how to read the Bible, that is revival. When you teach your kids how to lay hands and believe God for miracles, that is revival. When you teach your kids to live in love and hope, that is revival. People may not see it yet, but I promise you, just like Rahab, one generation moved into another and moved into another and moved into another until Jesus showed up. When we keep doing the same thing, the right thing, over and over and over again, and people tell us this is insignificant. People tell us you're wasting your time showing up every Sunday early to practice and to sing, showing up every Sunday to usher and to, uh, to help in the kids' ministry and to help with the simulcast, showing up at every location and people make fun of you wondering what you're doing. Tell them I'm, there is a glory that I'm carrying. I may not see the whole thing yet, but I know that I'm carrying a glory. Because if I wasn't supposed to carry the glory, the Lord would not have delivered me from what He delivered me from. I'm working it, I'm working it, I'm working it, I'm working it. And so Jesus takes that donkey in, and they sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the donkey finally realizes, I was born for this purpose. I was born to carry the glory. I was born to carry the presence. I was born to carry the anointing. And as you go through your life and you start to excel in things in your field and people start giving you praise, you always have to remember they're praising the one that I carry. They're not praising me. There is a glory on me. When doors start to open of their own accord, you have to remember the doors are not opening because I'm good. The doors are opening because the king of glory, I carry him. And people start looking at you and want to criticize you and start wondering, how come an imperfect person can carry the presence? Just tell them the Lord said he has needs of me. I'm not building my own empire. I make mistakes. I have faults. There's some things I don't know how to do. I'm too loud when I preach. There's some things I need to work on. But I keep on doing what I do because the one that I'm carrying says it's okay. And he's perfecting things in my life. Some of you are waiting to be perfect until you carry the glory. Jesus said, no, I never asked you to be perfect. All I'm asking you to do is give me space in your life so you can carry my glory to the place where I've assigned you. Because there comes a point when people are going to start asking, who is this man? And they will never get the opportunity to ask, who is this man, if you don't carry me there. When you get to the point where the crowds are putting their cloaks and they're putting their clothes and they're screaming about Jesus Christ and they're asking each other, who is this man? It's a bit of a concerning part of the scripture because when they ask, who is this man, I don't see any disciples responding. I don't see Peter or John responding. They ask who is this man and it's somebody else from the crowd that says this is Jesus, a prophet from Nazareth. Look, there's nothing wrong with being called a prophet if that's what you are. Right. But when you are God in the flesh, it's different. If the gospel that we preach stops here and it never permeates society, when people see the signs and the wonders, they're going to ask, who is this man? By which power and which authority do you do these signs? And somebody has to have the courage to say, it is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But they will never, the crowd will never be able to say that if we are afraid of saying it with force. That's the moment when the donkey wished he could talk where he wished he could open up his mouth and say, I'll tell you who this man is. He's the one that delivered me when everybody else was abusing me. Hallelujah. 
that's the moment when I wish the woman of the issue of blood showed up and said, I'll tell you who this man is. For years, I was shut up in my house with no rights and I couldn't leave that place. In pain, I was bleeding and losing my life. But one day I heard some noise in the city and though I knew it was illegal for me to go out in public, I went outside and covered myself up so nobody would recognize me and I crawled behind him and I pushed people in my way and finally I touched the hem of his garment and he turned around and he said, who touched me? And I said, I'm the one that touched you. And he said, not only are you going to be healed, but you are going to be made whole. Hallelujah. He is my healer. That's the moment where I wish the widow of Nain would have been there and said, I know this man. When my son was dead and we were carrying him to the funeral, he showed up and interrupted the funeral procession. He touched and he healed my son and brought him back to me. I know who this man is. I wish the Samaritan woman would have been there to say I was lost going from one relationship to the next and one day as I went to get some water from the well this man showed up and asked me for some water and I told him you are a Jew how come you are asking me for some water and he said to me if you knew the gift of God that was standing in front of you you will be the one that asked me for water then I asked him the Jews said we should worship here and our parents said we should worship there but what do you say that we should worship and Jesus said the time is coming and now is where those who worship the father will worship him in spirit and in truth and he revealed to me my whole life and I went to the city and I told the people this man is the son of God he showed me everything about me do you want me to keep going I will keep going. That's where I hope Abraham could have been there and say, I know this man. Before I was born, he was. One day I came back from battle and the guy called the Prince of Peace, the King of Salem showed up. His name back then was Melchizedek. But as I see him now, I recognize that he was Jesus Christ, Yeshua Amashi, that came out of time and into my season so that I can return the time for everything come on that's when I hope Daniel could have been there and say I recognize you when I was in the fire you showed up you're the one that came in the lion's den and shut up the mouth of them lions come on somebody I wish Naomi and I wish Naomi and, and Ruth were there and say we thought Boaz was our kinsman redeemer but Yeshua Amashi is our redeemer he's our king because he is both man and is God unto us as a, unto us a child was given unto us a child was born and unto us a son was given the child that was born is his earthly nature the son that was given is his divine nature and so he's a kinsman but he's also our Redeemer and we thought Boaz was the one that was redeeming us but in fact it was Yeshua our Redeemer I wish David had been there to testify and David would have shown up and said I thought I was the good shepherd but you are the good shepherd hallelujah I thought I was the one that was rescuing hallelujah the lamb from the lion and the lamb from the bear but you are the good shepherd that delivers us from our past and gives us the courage to face our future I wish some of y'all would have been there to testify and say he is my healer he is my deliverer he He's my way maker. He made ways out of no ways. He opened prison doors for me. When I thought it was too late for me, he said and came and said, leave again, breathe again, try again, don't give up. Your best is yet to come. I have saved some good things in store for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know if you want me to keep going. I wish. Don't get me started. I'll preach the whole Bible. Don't get me started. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in Lima. Come on, somebody in Lima, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in Wayne Campus. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so at the Eastwood campus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so downtown. Somebody jump up on your feet at the Maumee campus. Because if they don't hear your testimony, they don't know how good it's been. If they don't hear your testimony, they don't know that it's real. And they keep asking each other, who is this man? When they should be asking you, what has he done for you? How did he deliver you? How did he break you through? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Just, just have a seat for a little bit. I'm going to bring this home. Yes, yes, that's, that's me indeed. Come on. The doctor is in the house today. And so, and so, Jesus comes in. And you have to understand that at that time there were two different currents of thoughts. There was one group that believed they would come as a servant. And one group that believed it would come as a conquering king. And so he shows up looking like a servant, but people are calling him the son of David, which means he's royalty. They're not sure what to do with him. And Jesus doesn't go to the palace. He goes to the temple. Listen, I understand that revival is going to happen everywhere. I understand that there are signs and wonders happening already. But what I do not agree is the thought of the philosophy that God is going to forsake his own house and break revival out somewhere else. I am entirely opposed philosophically to that thought. Because I believe that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all the other mountains above all the other kingdoms and all the people shall come to it. I believe in the name of Jesus as revival and the power of God is increasing and the manifestation of the Spirit are increasing. We are going to see tangible signs, wonders and miracles in the house of the Lord. The house of God will not be the last. I say it again with power and authority and belief and conviction. We are going to see from the house of the Lord healings and deliverances and, and prophets and teachers being sent out. I don't believe in that philosophy that somehow the epicenter of the things of God is going to move to small homes. And, and, and I don't believe that. I believe in the name of Jesus that God is restoring his authority, his power to his church. And we're getting closer and closer to the full manifestation. When he restored the apostolic authority and leadership to the house. Hallelujah. That was a sign that God is getting ready to unleash. He's getting ready to unleash something like we've never seen before. He's getting ready to unleash. And so Jesus goes and he doesn't go. He doesn't try to go do politics. He goes to the house. Because he says, if we fix the house, we can take over. If we fix the house. So he goes to the house and he starts whooping people and destroying things that have no business being there. Some of you think Jesus is that meek, lowly, weak. Well, Jesus went there and nobody dared to stop him. No soldiers. I was wondering where the priests were at. Because they like to talk a whole lot. Where were you when he had the rope in his hand? I didn't see you talking then. And so he's restoring. He's reorganizing. Listen, church. It's not that, and I don't want to go against theology or whatever. It's not that it was so bad for them to sell stuff there. But he was trying to tell them. You've been buying pigeons and lambs for centuries. But the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world is here. In just a little bit, the old will be done with. Your old practice, you will not need them anymore. Because there is a new that is coming. Can I talk to you as a son of the house? I want to speak to all the campuses and 
all the people that are watching us and listening to us. There's a lot of changes that we're doing. It's not because the old was bad, but to everything there is a season. For everything under the sun there is a season. And so when Phil and Meredith decide we're going to do this different, it doesn't mean that the old was bad. It simply means there's a new season. And if you believe in us, if you give us a chance, what it looks a little bit messy, if you give us a chance and you show up when we have simulcast, when we understand you could have stayed home, but we believe there is something new, there is a new wave that is coming. If you give us a chance and you buy into the vision as we're moving tables and we're changing things and renaming departments and reassigning things, if you give us a chance, it could be that the anointing comes at a higher level because the things that may have worked in the past Maybe those things belong to another season. And maybe God has some new things that he wants us to do so we can reach the generation that we are in. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, it's not comfortable. It's not comfortable for any of us. But we believe God. Yeah. We believe our faith is in God. Our hope is in God. And we pray and we tell God, Father, we pray for our leadership. We pray for Phil, we pray for Meredith, we pray for Bishop. I may not understand all the changes that are going on, but I know in the name of Jesus, he has done it for 30 years, and I know he can hear the voice of the Lord. I pray that you, you open up his ears, that he may hear clearly, that you give his children the gift, the talent, the ability, so that they can implement the vision. But what I refuse to do, hey, I refuse to allow the old to keep me from walking into the new. Jesus entered the temple and he starts changing things and it looks chaotic until the lame come, the blind come, the sick come and he starts to deliver them. Whew. Let's sing that Break Every Chain song. Let's just play behind me. He starts to deliver them. There's some people in this room You see, I've been going through these cycles over and over and over again. And I need Jesus. He says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I need him to come help me. I want to ask all of the musicians at all the campuses to get in position. All the musicians at all the campuses. Mark Cross at the Eastwood, I believe, today. Christian Vaculik downtown Jim Wand in Lima Donald Ken and Aaron Butler at the Wayne campus get in position I'm also going to ask all the leadership from all these campuses to get ready I'm going to switch it to you in just two minutes I didn't come to just tell you a story about a historical Jesus that's used to heal they used to deliver. They used to set free. I came to talk to you about Jesus who is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And some of you are like that donkey that's tied. And you keep going around in circle. And in circle. And in circle, using your energy, but you're not moving forward. Using your energy, but nothing seems to be moving. He is here today to break every chain. He is here today to deliver you. He is here today to bring you out. Hallelujah. Everybody standing. getting ready to call you to the front and I'm asking all the campus pastors to go ahead and take the service at this point as we call people to the front for deliverance for healing and for the ministry of Jesus Christ
So I release the service now to Lima, to Pastor Wayne. I release this to John C. Queen at the Wayne campus. Release it to Scott Eastep at the downtown campus. And I release it to Blake Elder at the Eastwood campus. Go ahead, in the hand of your campus pastor. For those of you that are here with us, and those of you on the online campus, hallelujah. If you need Jesus Christ to touch you to break chains, if you need Jesus Christ to touch you, to remove from you limitations, to open up doors for breakthrough, come on, run to this altar now. Run to this altar. Run. Run to this altar. Chains break. Chains break. Chains break. Come on in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. what we'll do church there's an anointing in the house please listen I can do two things I can run through the line quickly or I can have people that will actually spend a little more time with you minister to you amen what I want to do is I want us my wife to help me. Dave Pyle, your wife, please help me as well. Um, some of the prayer partners. I need, I need about seven prayer partners. Okay. Go ahead, Nani, go ahead. So what we'll do, and I've, I've asked the ushers to have one usher per person that prays. So before you lay hands on somebody, make sure that there is an usher behind them. Okay? And then we're going to pray and believe God. We're going to pray and believe God. How many believe that is the anointing of Jesus that does it? Amen. Go ahead, Alan. Come on, the rest of you worship with us. There is power.
Listen, church. We're going to go out. We're going to go out. I want to dismiss everybody. I was, I was, I was taught to sow into an atmosphere. It's what I've been taught. It's what I've been taught. And so as a way of dismissal today, I'm going to pray, pray over you. But I want to open these altars and I'm going to ask the ushers to put some buckets in front, right here in front. And those of you who want to sow a seed into this atmosphere, you want to sow a seed into this atmosphere, prepare your gifts, prepare your giving. Some of you are going to use the giving stations, but I want you to, as you use the giving stations, come and touch the altar. Even if you use your app and your, in your phone, come and touch the altar. Because where there is a tangible presence of God, a seed must be sown. Somebody say amen. amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your presence here. We will build a memorial to remember this is a place, this is a time where God met us. And we build that memorial today. Isaac sowed in a time of famine and reaped. So we decree and we declare today in the name of Jesus, somebody's famine is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus, somebody's cycle of unfruitfulness is coming to an end. And somebody's season of breakthrough is coming to be now in Jesus' name. Come on, do you receive this word today? Come on, let's put our hands for Jesus. Listen, we love you. The team is going to play a little bit here. But as those of you that have a gift to, to bring, come on, bring it to the altar. If you already gave or your phone, just touch the altar and believe God. Believe God. Believe God. There is a glory here. Take it home with you, all right? We love you. We'll see you on Thursday. Have a great day. Amen. Hey, Cornerstone Live, where well, we are here today. My name is Aaron Davis, and I'm here with Dr. Mel Beatty. Awesome word today. Thank you, sir. Incredible, Thank incredible. You. Now, I want to dive right on in because you talked about three important things. Yes, you talked sir. about God has need of me. Yeah. I, I mean, that just breaks all barriers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all barriers. Can yeah. you just give us a little bit more? Because I know those of you that are watching, uh -huh. you need to hear this yeah. more. Yeah. You know. There's a theological belief out there that God doesn't need anybody. Correct. The reality is when God created us, he created purpose and he wrapped it in flesh. Yeah. And if we don't accomplish our purpose, that purpose is not going to be accomplished. And so God has need of every single person that he created. My God. Because if he hid purpose in a jar of clay. Come on. And if that if that if that person doesn't tap into their potential, then that purpose is not going to be Come on. Be, it's not going to be accomplished. So yes, God has need of us. He sent you to the earth yes. with a plan, with a purpose, and he wrapped it in, in, a, in an envelope of flesh. And sometimes people don't realize it, but if you are alive here in the earth, there is a purpose in you Correct. that God has sent you to the earth to accomplish. So God has need of you. And the only way for deliverance okay. is to realize that God needs me. 
You're right. So if God needs me, then I can't allow the enemy to abuse me. My God. I can't have two masters at the same time. Same time. I can mm -hmm. either serve God or yeah. serve the enemy. And people struggle with deliverance when deliverance comes from serving God. Yeah. You serve God, you switch your allegiances, you become delivered. Yeah, it's yeah. as simple as that. As simple as that. Yes, sir. I mean, and, and the thing is what I love too is that you talked about we are walking with the purpose, mm -hmm. the presence. Yes. We're walking with the anointing. Yes, sir. You know, so I mean, there's times where I know that we stand on this earth and we think, well, what, what, what do I really have? You know, what, what need does God have of me? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I love how you just, you kind of brought that home and really delivered that in and said, no, you are walking with the anointing. You are. And even at times when you don't realize, look at Rahab. Yeah. Look at the life that she was living before God found her. The enemy knew that God was going to use her womb. He knew that he knew that was part of a purpose. Come on. And that's why he tried to abuse that. Yeah. But when God comes and pulls her out of that situation, all of a sudden she becomes fruitful. The Bible doesn't say that she had any kids before. Right. But now she becomes fruitful. She gives birth to a child that's in the genealogy of David, that's then in the genealogy of Jesus. Yeah. And so oftentimes people are, are, are caught in situations because the enemy knows exactly what God has created you to do and he tries to abuse that purpose. My I have a lot of friends who used to be drug dealers that are saved now okay. and they invite the most people to the church because they know how to deal good news. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. the enemy perverted their purpose ah, and they were selling come on, in the come streets. On, come on. But now most of the people that are invited to the church is mo mostly at Wayne Campus. The people that come to church are being invited by former drug addict or drug dealers because they, 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 they're used to sharing it. Yeah, yeah. When they find something good, they share it. And they're the number one oh evangelist at the Wayne Campus but, right you, now. And, and so when you're saying it, isn't that the most the most thing that is is so common and yeah. i wouldn't even say common it is just the most evident thing in all of us that mm -hmm. most of the time yeah. when we are out doing anything whether it's in the world whether you even for the kingdom yeah. that is something god has already placed on the inside of us exactly and so somehow the enemy goes in and he perverts it he mm -hmm. twists it but you look at people and you can see them walking in something you're like look at that just that natural talent or that natural gift mm -hmm. that is already in them if yes, they can sir. just tap into that yeah. and turn that thing around that's just the power that can be released in the, in the earth that's all you need to do. The, the devil doesn't create. Yeah. God is a creator. Right. And to know your purpose, you have to return to your creator. He's My the gosh. one that can reset you, reorganize you. And oftentimes the same skills that you use in the world, it's because God has already endued you with that power. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I want to encourage everybody watching us today. Yes. God loves you. God has a need of you. And you were created to carry the glory of God. That's why you were created. So don't allow anything else to oppress you. Don't allow anything else to abuse you. God has need of you today. Yes. Well, amen, everyone. This was awesome. Uh, incredible. Thank Dr. Mel, thank you so much for thank joining you. us here. We appreciate you. I know you guys at home, wherever you are watching us, I know that you appreciated this word that came forth tonight. Well, I'm sorry, not tonight, this morning, actually. Yes, yes. Um, we are excited to know that in this season, this series that we are pressing in on that Jesus is. Continue to keep connected with us. Join us back here Thursday night yes. for the night shift. It's and again awesome. on Sunday as we kick off this last deal on Jesus is. And guys, it doesn't just end on this particular series because we're going to continue and carry out for the rest of this year for what God has for us. This is the season of fruitfulness. Amen. This is a year of fruitfulness. Amen. So Amen. this is blessings for now. We're going to sign off here. All right. And we love you we all. Love y'all. Take care. See you God Thursday. Bless.